Hi there again. We're up here at the camp and I don't know about you, but I've been looking at what's going on in the world and it's high time that we got out of the uh, downtown areas, get out into a place where you can grow your own food because not only uh, we're looking at disease and all kinds of things, but we're going to have to grow our own food. Now I just want to take you on a little tour just in a little piece of our garden here today, show you what we're doing up here. We've just uh, taken some raspberry plants and we've transplanted them. We're going to show you how we did that. Very basic. But Brian, what are, what are we doing here? Maybe you can just tell them what we've, the way we've done this. Well, we have got some raspberry plants here that were brought to us by a very good friend, transplanted about three years ago. And they've actually been transplanted a couple times now from our friend to a garden on the other side of the creek. And today we brought them over here to the big garden and they're looking very healthy. We're building moats, we're giving them a good dose of water, then we're putting on wood chips. To and what, the what do in. the wood chips do? Let's show them. We got these wood chips, we got some truckloads up here, and um, what, what can you tell us about the chips? Well, the chips keep all the moisture in, and so the idea is that we won't have to water near as much. Maybe never. Hardly at all Hardly we're at finding. All. It's called Back to Eden, and Paul, Alicia, do you know what his name is? Paul, if you just go back to back to Eden on internet, you'll find him. His name is Paul. And he's probably not the only one, but he's really been uh, a forerunner in this method. And he discovered that everything that God does has a covering. Everything has a covering. Uh, even ourselves. Uh, Yeshua, of course, is our covering. But the ground has a covering and that's how the moisture stays in. So he did some work, found out if you put a covering on the ground, the water actually stays in the ground. And we tried it a couple of years ago and last year I tried it with the apple trees. And the water, we never had to water after and I'd move the chips away and nice and moist underneath the ground. So this is the way we're doing it. We're going to eventually put more chips on here, but we're just uh, transplanting these, make sure they, it keeps the water in as best we can. And the other thing about the chips is don't mix the chips into the ground. It's just a covering. If you mix it into the ground, it uses a lot of nitrogen and destroys the soil. So you want, anytime you work with this, you want to spread the um, chips over. And we're going to take you over and show you some potatoes and how we do that as well. But I just want to show you, we're doing an experimenting up here trying to figure out what grows the best. We're about 2,700 feet in the um, Western Canada, kind of tucked up against the mountains. So we have a little uh, climate in here that we have to work with. It's a little cooler, but we get some good hot sun today. It's about 90 degrees, so we get some good weather up here. So come on over here, show you a little experiment we did. Uh, I planted this rye last fall. Um, for two reasons. One is to cover your crop and I wanted to see if we could grow grain up here. So this is what we have here just with, um, you know, broadcast spread. So we found out that we can grow lots of grain. We've got about 40, 50 acres out here. We could turn into barley, wheat, uh, whatever we want. So it grows really well up here. And then we got a little potato patch over here. We want to put some chips on that. And, um, over at our neighbors, Tasha and Seb, what they do with their potatoes is they just, they put uh, sawdust on the top and then they just move the sawdust and put the potato right on top of the ground and they grow tons of potato. You don't even have to go into the soil, you just reach down and you grab the potatoes. But here I'll just show you what we're doing. We just did some weeding, we got to do some watering and once we get these organized, we've got some chips coming up here next week, we're going to chip all this and hopefully that's going to be the last watering we're going to have to do on that. And uh, here we've got some apple trees I'll show you over here. And here again uh, we're trying to tell people that they really need to get out of the cities and get to where they can grow their own food. Food is going to get scarce. We're told there's going to be famines, pestilence. We're getting all the warning signs right now so it's time to do this. So what we did is we've got a bunch of apple trees. We're battling, we're battling a little rodent that eats the bark around the bottom. So we're trying to figure out how we can overcome that. But these are all things that you learn when you get out there. And um, it's kind of like sin. It's kind of gone off course. Everything's gone off course. So we're trying to 
work with the challenges that we have of the day and uh, and so on so I uh, will talk to you later thanks for joining me on a little tiny tour at the camp Thank you.